Hey guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and welcome back to my video channel. Thanks so much for joining me and I've got another exciting topic for us in the world or ecosystem of LexD, which is how the default configuration of networking works, as well as a couple of other options that you have to connect your virtual machines to your network. Now, before we get into the topic, make sure you leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment with your knowledge and experience on the topic at hand here, again, LXD networking, and help other people to solve any problems that they might come across as they're trying to configure LexD. All right, so let's jump into this topic here, and we're going to be covering, for starters, what the default network configuration of LexD actually looks like when you run the LexD init command. So for starters, we've got the internet out there, and we've got our internal network. I'm going to use my home network as an example here. Oftentimes, you'll have a CIDR block like 192.168.4.0 slash 23 or something like that. Basically, that's just your internal IPv4 address space that you're going to be using to connect various devices to your network. Now, typically you're going to have a router. That router will have an external interface going out to the internet, but on the internal side, it'll also have an internal IP address, and that'll serve as your default gateway for your devices to communicate out to the internet through the router's public interface. Now, when we talk about LexD here, you're going to have a machine, probably a bare metal machine, but it could also be a virtual machine running on something like Hyper-V or even on top of LexD itself. And that'll have a physical network interface that's attached to your network. And so it'll have an IP address that can directly communicate with other devices on your network, including your router's internal or private network interface. So the LexD host itself running Ubuntu Linux in this case is going to have access to the router to route out to the internet. And the router, if necessary, can also communicate directly with services that are running on the LexD host. But LexD itself isn't what we're talking about here. We actually want to know how to connect virtual machines to our network, right? So when you run LexD init dash dash auto, the default network configuration in LexD is going to create this internal virtual network called a bridge network. LexD is automatically going to assign a CIDR block to that network in the 10.x address space, and it'll be a slash 24 CIDR block. And by default, when you deploy a virtual machine onto your LexD host, it's going to get connected to this network. Also, as part of the initialization process after this bridge network gets created, LexD is also going to create a virtual network adapter on the LexD operating system, so in this case Ubuntu Linux, and it'll attach that virtual network interface to this virtual bridge network. Now, when you deploy virtual machines, let's say we have an Ubuntu virtual machine that we deploy onto the LexD host, as we've seen in earlier videos, that virtual machine is going to get a network interface that is attached to that same bridge network. What that means is that this Ubuntu virtual machine here and the host operating system for LexD, which is also Ubuntu in this case, are going to be able to communicate with each other on this virtual bridge network. Also, if the virtual machine here needs to get out to the internet, it can actually route through the bridge interface on the LexD host, and it can go out through the physical network adapter on the LexD host and route out to the internet that way. However, other devices that are on your internal physical network are not going to be able to make outbound connections to the virtual machine or any services that are running on it because it's protected behind this NATed bridge network here. So when you create additional virtual machines, whether they're running you know, Windows, whether they're running Ubuntu Linux or Alpine Linux, they're all going to get attached by default to this bridge network down here, and each of them will receive a unique IP address on that internal bridge to network, allowing communication with the LexD host and to the outside world outbound. But if you have any inbound traffic coming into those virtual machines, we're going to have to find some other way to accomplish that. All right, so the first way that we can accomplish providing access to services running on virtual machines on your LexD host is to use something called forwarding rules, 
We can use the LXC command line tool to create these forwarding rules, as we'll see in just a moment here. But this is very similar to the default configuration with Docker. So if you've ever played with Docker containers, you're probably familiar with the bridge network that gets created. And then when you run a container in Docker, you have to publish a port from the container to the host so that whatever service is running inside that container is accessible on the host's physical network interface. Well, this is very similar to that, only in this case, we're talking about using LexD with virtual machines instead of Docker spinning up containers. So let's say we've got this virtual machine down here, VM01, and it's got a IP address on the bridge network down here. And let's say that we have a laptop that we want to be able to connect to a service, like a web application that's listening on TCP port 80 on this virtual machine. It could be just an Nginx or Apache installation or some other application that you develop, uh, but it doesn't really matter what that application is. The idea here is that this laptop that's connected to our physical network needs to be able to access this service. So how do we do that? Well, we can create something known as a network forwarding rule in LexD. And what that does is it exposes the physical IP address of the physical network interface on the LexD host here to the bridge network here. And then once we've specified that we want to create that forwarding rule, we can expose specific ports that are exposed on certain IP addresses on the bridge network here to the physical IP address of the LexD host. And so that way, this laptop right here can actually hit the IP address of the LexD host, and that network traffic will get forwarded through the LexD host over to the target IP address of the service that is being exposed. Another option that you actually have is to create a secondary IP address on the physical network interface of the LexD host. And then you can actually take that entire secondary address and forward all of the traffic for that secondary address to an internal address on the internal LexD bridge network as well. And we can do that by specifying a target address when we create one of these forwarding rules. So now that we understand forwarding rules, let's talk about Mac VLAN. Mac VLAN is a really nice way to connect your virtual machines directly to your physical network with minimal overhead. There are some limitations to Mac VLAN that you'll want to be aware of, though. It doesn't work in all circumstances, but if you have a wired physical network interface to your physical network from your LexD host, then you should be able to make use of Mac VLAN. So let's talk about how Mac VLAN works. So we're going to eliminate this concept of the bridge network. And instead, what we want to do is connect our virtual machine directly to our physical network. Now, as you probably know from a networking standpoint, when the LexD host attaches its physical network adapter to the network, it has a MAC address or a physical address, it's also known as, and that uniquely identifies that physical network interface to the local network, right? Well, what we can do with Mac VLAN is actually give a unique MAC address to the same network interface on the LexD host, but what we can do is actually assign that secondary MAC address to the virtual machine that's running on the LexD host. And so effectively, we are connecting that virtual machine directly to the physical network through the same physical network interface. Now, there are some scenarios where this isn't going to work. First of all, one of the limitations is that in this configuration with Mac VLAN, the virtual machine will not be able to hit the IP address of the LexD host. So if the virtual machine needs to communicate with the LexD host, it's not going to be able to do that in this configuration. Also, in my experience, I tried to actually set up Mac VLAN on a Hyper-V guest, uh, basically acting as my LexD host. And Hyper-V seems to actually block Mac VLAN traffic. It doesn't seem to like the fact that multiple Mac addresses are associated with a single network interface. So unfortunately, that's not going to work. But if you have a bare metal physical host, then it probably will work. Also, Wi-Fi security, WPA security, actually breaks the ability for Mac VLAN to work because when you connect a Wi-Fi network interface to an access point, only one MAC address is expected. So if you have multiple MAC addresses being bound to the same wireless interface, then the access point is going to reject that network traffic. 
So be, bear in mind those limitations of Mac VLAN, but if you have a bare metal host with a physical wired interface, then Mac VLAN is a great way to connect your machines to your physical network. All right, so the last type of networking that we're going to be talking about here is bridge adapters. Now, this is an alternative to using Mac VLAN, where you don't have the limitation of the virtual machine not being able to communicate with the host. When you use a bridge adapter, the VM can communicate with the host and the host can talk to the VM, but we still allow the virtual machine to get a direct address on the physical network. So what we do in this particular case is we first have to create this bridge adapter, which is a virtual type of adapter in Linux on the LexD host. And then we have to master the physical interface. So the actual wired physical interface on the LexD host that becomes a child of the bridge interface. So the bridge interface is going to serve as a master interface to the physical interface. So if you have ETH0, then the bridge adapter becomes the master of ETH0 on the physical server. Now, the IP address that you would typically get on the physical interface of your LexD host is actually going to now be assigned to the bridge adapter instead of directly to the physical adapter. And that's just an implementation detail of how bridge network adapters work in Linux. Now, let's talk about the virtual machine. Well, in the LXD environment, when you create a virtual machine and you tell it to use a bridged network, the virtual machine still gets its own virtual network adapter associated to it. However, there is a parent-child relationship between the host's bridge adapter and the virtual network interface that gets associated with the virtual machine. And so very similar to Mac VLAN, the virtual machine can now get an IP address from the DHCP server on your physical network. And then basically all these devices can communicate with each other. So if you have a laptop on the physical network that needs to talk to the virtual machine, it has a direct IP address on that layer two network. So there's no routing that needs to occur from the IP layer standpoint. Now, the big benefit here is that you still are going to be able to communicate between your LXD host and the virtual machines on it. You're not kind of cutting off access between those like you are with Mac VLAN. So that's a great benefit of using this approach. All right, so here are some practice tasks that you want to play around with in your own environment on your own LexD host to ensure that you really understand how these networking concepts work. So the first one is to be able to configure a Mac VLAN uh, network. And then once you've created that Mac VLAN network, you can then go ahead and start connecting virtual machines to it. Also, another thing that you could do is to create a bridged network interface and connect your virtual machines to that bridged network interface. And that is going to, of course, as we discussed, give you the ability to communicate between the VMs and the host. Also, you can set up forwarding rules as we talked about, and that's what we're actually going to take a look at right now. So I'm here on one of my LexD virtual machines, and this is actually a Hyper-V guest operating system. So I actually created a Hyper-V virtual machine, installed Ubuntu Linux inside of it, and installed LexD inside of it as well. And I enabled nested virtualization on the Hyper-V virtual machine here so that the processor can actually handle uh, virtualization of machines here. So we're actually doing nested virtualization on the Windows operating system right here. So for starters, let's go ahead and launch a VM. So we're going to go ahead and run LXC and launch VM. We'll specify an image like Ubuntu 2304 from the images server. And then we'll just give it a name like U01. And we'll inspect the default network configuration of LexD while this virtual machine is launching. So as you can see, the virtual machine doesn't get an IP address right away. It takes a few seconds to initialize. But now what we're going to do is actually inspect the network itself that was created when we ran LexD init, originally setting up this LexD host. So there is a network subcommand here for LXC. So if we do LXC network, we can go ahead and just list the networks that are currently configured. And as you can see right here, we've got our physical network interface, ETH0, but then that is the bridge network right here. So it's called LXD BR0. And this is a network, a virtual network that's being managed by LexD itself. 
And as you can see, the IP address CIDR block that we have allocated to this virtual network is 10.110.115.1 slash 24. So any addresses inside of that CIDR block will be used to associate to virtual machines. So if we do an LXC list on our virtual machines, you can see that we have 10.110.115.175, which falls into this CIDR block right here. So now the question becomes, well, how can I, from my local workstation here, access a service that is running on that virtual machine using network forwarding rules? Well, what we're going to do here is, first of all, just install a very basic web server on that machine. So we'll do LXC exec onto this machine and get an interactive bash shell. Then we'll just do an apt update command and we'll just install the nginx package which installs a really basic web server listening on port 80. So we'll do apt install nginx dash dash yes and that should just take a couple of seconds to get nginx installed and it'll serve up a static web page on port 80 nothing super special uh, but that'll be enough for us to test out connectivity too. Now I'm going to fire up another shell here and on my local system, so my desktop workstation, I want to be able to reach into that bridge network to communicate with this virtual machine. And if you recall from our diagram on the forwarding rules, we are actually going to be exposing our host's uh, IP address to the service internally so that we can hit that external IP address of the host from our other devices on our network. So what we actually need to do for starters is to figure out what the IP address of the host itself is. So let's do an IP adder command here. And as you can see, we've got 10.0.0.76 right here. So that's going to be the IP address that we are going to try to hit from our client here. So I'm going to use PowerShell to just do an invoke web request command. And we'll specify the URI of 10.0.0.76. And I'll specify a port like 32,450. And so we need to expose the service, the Nginx service running on the virtual machine inside of that isolated bridge network on port 32,450 on the LXD hosts network interface. So let me just put this into a simple while loop here. And then we'll just say sleep for uh, maybe 500 milliseconds. So we'll just make two requests every second. And as you can see right now, there is no connectivity here. And that's because the virtual machine is listening on port 80, but we have not exposed the service externally to the host IP address yet. So that's what we're going to do with the network forwarding rules in LexD. So back on the LexD host, we need to start by creating one of these forwarding rules. So we'll do LXC network forward. And then under the forward context, there is a create command right up here. And that create command is going to allow us to create a rule that forwards traffic to a specific bridge network for a certain listening address. So we already know what the listening address is. It's 10.0.0.76. So we'll do a LXE network forward create, specify LXD BR0, and then the host's IP address 10.0.0.76. All right, so now we've got the forwarding rule in place, but you'll see that we are currently missing some details. First of all, we didn't specify the virtual machine and we didn't specify a port to listen on the host. And we also didn't specify a target port for the service that is listening on port 80 on the virtual machine inside of the bridge network. So creating the network forwarding rule isn't enough. We actually have to create what's known as a port specification to tell LXD where to forward the network traffic to. So let's do LXC network forward again, but this time we're going to go into the port context instead of creating a new forwarding rule. And we are going to add a new port forwarding rule to the existing network forwarding rule that we have created. So let's do port. And then we're going to do add right here. That'll add a new rule. Then we need to specify the network, uh, which we've already created. And we also need to specify our listening address. We also need to specify our protocol, which is either TCP or UDP. Then we have our listening ports on the host network interface. Then we have the internal target IP address of the virtual machine and the target port of the service 
for the virtual machine, which is going to be port 80. And then the listener here, we need to make sure is going to match the one that we are requesting, which I believe is 32450. All right, so let's go ahead and run this here. We'll do LXC network forward port add. We'll do LXD BR0, 100076 is our listener address. And then I always forget the order here. So we're going to do the protocol next, which is going to be TCP. Then we're going to do our listener address, which is 32450. And then we specify the virtual machine IP address, which is going to be 10.110.115.1. And I got to look this up again here. So we'll do an LXC list. So it's dot 175. All right. So now what we want to do is specify the port that the service is listening on, on the virtual machine, which is port 80. And just like that, we've created a port forwarding rule. And if we go back to the program here, PowerShell, that's doing a re web request, you can see that these web requests are now succeeding and we're getting HTTP status code 200 because we successfully set up a forwarding rule from 32450 on the host and that's going to send traffic or forward traffic to the virtual machine on port 80. So we're reaching into that bridge network and accessing the service on port 80 on the VM's internal bridge network IP address. Now, we also talked about how we can expose an entire secondary IP address to a virtual machine as well. So we don't have to do these individual port forwarding rules. We can actually add a secondary IP address to the host, such as you know 10.0.0.163 or something, and then take that entire IP address on the host and forward all of the network traffic to the virtual machine so that we don't have to create individual port specifications. So let's go ahead and try that now. I'm just going to cancel these web requests since we know that they are working. And now I'm going to pick another IP address on my network that I can statically assign to the host's interface. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a ping here and say ping 10.0.179. And it looks like there is nothing on that IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and use that address to add to our host. So I'm going to use the IP command here to add a new address. So we'll say IP address, and then you can always look at help for it as well. And we're going to use this add command right here to specify a new address using CIDR notation on a particular interface. Now, if we look at our interfaces here with IP link, you can see that I've got my ETH0 right here. So that's my physical, in this case, it's a virtual Hyper-V interface, but that's kind of the physical interface that's connecting the Hyper-V host to the network. So that's the interface that we want to add the address to. So we'll say IP address add 10.0.0, and then it was 179 slash 24 to the device ETH0. And we need to use sudo to do that because we're making changes to the network configuration of our LexD host. And so now if we do IP adder, we should see that we have a secondary address bound to the ETH0 network interface. So now we can take this secondary address and forward all network traffic that goes to that address, regardless of what port it's on, directly to the virtual machine. So how do we do that? Well, we'll do an LXC network list here. And as you can see, we've currently got this network forwarding rule set up. And so what we're going to do is actually delete that. We'll say LXC network forward delete. And we're going to delete the LXD BR0 for the listener address 10.0.0.76. So we'll specify LXD BR0 10.0.0.76. And so now we've destroyed that forwarding rule. And if we were to try to access that service, on port 32450, we're actually going to see that that fails again because we've now deleted that forwarding rule. But we're going to restore connectivity back to that Nginx service by taking the entire IP address of 10.0.0.179 and send it to that machine. So what we'll do is say LXC network forward, and we're going to create a new rule here. But this time, we're going to specify the network and the listening address, but we're going to specify a target 
address here. And that is going to be the IP address of the virtual machine that is running on the bridge network, which again is 10.110.115.175. We'll do LXD BR0, 100. It's actually going to be 179 here. And then we're going to specify the internal IP target address 10.110.115.175. So now if we hit 10.0.0.179, that's mapped to the LexD host, but any traffic sent to that, regardless of the port, is going to be forwarded to the virtual machine's IP address. So now all we have to do is change the URL that we're attempting to request right here to 10.0.0.179, and we don't have to specify a port number because by default, HTTP requests are on port 80, and that's just going to get passed right through to port 80 on the virtual machine. And as you can see, that works perfectly fine. We're able to make requests to any port on 179 and that gets sent to the virtual machine. So now we can spin up additional services on the virtual machine. And all we have to do is hit those services on whatever port they're listening on, on this external IP address. And that will forward to the correct port internally on the virtual machine. All right, so now that we understand how forwarding rules work, both with individual port specifications, as well as how to add secondary IP addresses to the host and forward those IP addresses to the virtual machine in their entirety, let's talk about Mac VLAN and bridge networks really quick. Now, I'm not actually going to go through the configuration process because I already have it set up on my bare metal host. So I don't want to break the existing network configuration, but I did want to at least show you what the configuration of Mac VLAN and the bridge configuration looks like. So let me do an LXC profile list right here. And as you can see, I've got two different profiles set up on my bare metal host, right? So this is my bare metal host. This is not my Hyper-V guest. And so I have a bridge and a Mac VLAN profile here so that when I create virtual machines, I can choose to either use the bridge interface, which connects them directly to my physical network, or I can use the Mac VLAN approach, which also allows me to connect them directly to my physical network. Of course, with the caveat that I can't connect to the physical host from the virtual machine. So if I do an LXC profile show for Mac VLAN, this is actually really, really easy to set up because all you have to do is create your own custom profile. You can name it whatever you want to, but then you want to override the default ETH0 configuration from the default LexD profile. And you want to set the NIC type to Mac VLAN to indicate that you want to use the Mac VLAN driver on the host. Then you specify the parent interface. And normally that would be either ETH0 or you know, ENS0. It really depends on your specific hardware, what that's going to be. But you can find out just by running IP link right here what that is. So in my case, it would be ENO1 normally. But because I've set up bridge networking and the bridge network adapter actually takes over the IP address of the physical network adapter, I actually have to specify that bridge network adapter instead. But normally, if you hadn't set up the bridge network in advance, then you would actually use the device name of the physical network adapter. So that's my wired adapter that's connected physically through with a Cat5 cable to my network. So that's how we would configure Mac VLAN is simply to parent the virtual interface associated with the virtual machine to the parent interface, which is the physical interface. Or again, in my case, because I've already created a bridge adapter, the virtual bridge adapter. So that's Mac VLAN. And then if we do an LXC profile show on bridge here, this is another custom profile that I have created. And as you can see right here, what we've done is changed the NIC type to bridged and the parent of the bridged interface on the virtual machine is going to be the bridge adapter. Now, in order to create that bridge adapter, you can actually use the IP command right here. And let's take a look at our IP links right here. So if we look for BR0 right here, you can see that this is a bridge adapter. And if we do an IP adder on BR0, I forget exactly how we view that specific one. I think it might be the show command. Let's do IP adder show or BR0. So as you can see, this actually has the IP address on my physical network, but this actually has a child adapter. If we do IP adder show on 
ENO1. This is my physical wired network adapter, and you can see that its master is the bridge interface. So we've made ENO0, ENO1 a child of BR0. That's its master interface. And so the physical interface doesn't actually have an IP address because when you make a bridge adapter, the master of a physical interface, that bridge interface kind of takes over at the host level and has the IP address on the physical network, not the physical interface here. And so that's how we know that our physical interface has a parent bridge adapter. And then of course it tells us exactly which adapter is the master. So we can look at that and say, all right, BR0 is a valid uh, virtual adapter right here. And then if we look at the profile configuration for the bridge adapter, we are simply parenting any virtual machines to that bridge adapter. So I know that's kind of wordy, it's kind of confusing, but trust me, it works. It's working on this system right here. And I actually have virtual machines set up using those interfaces. So for example, I could exec into my Rocket Chat VM right here. And if I do an IP adder, you can see that I have a physical IP address from my actual network. So it's getting a DHCP address from my DHCP server. And so that's using the bridged interface. And I can also take a look at another virtual machine that I created called Mac VLAN 01, I think. And if I take a look at the IP address of that as well, you can see that that also has an IP address on my physical network. However, if I was to try to ping the host address right here, which is going to be 10.0.0, let me find BR0, 10.0.0.151. Let's try to do that from the Mac VLAN system. So we'll say ping 10.0.0.151. As you can see, that is failing because with Mac VLAN, we can't communicate between the VM and the host. However, if I go back to my Rocket Chat server right here and try to ping 10.0.0.0, 151, you can see that when I use bridged connections, the virtual machines on LexD can actually communicate with the LexD host. So both of them work. It's really just kind of up to you which one is going to work best for your specific scenario. I like Mac VLAN because it doesn't require you to set up that separate bridged interface personally. Um, but again, it's really kind of up to you what route you actually want to go. So in any case, I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Uh, thanks for joining me and make sure again that you leave a like on this video, leave a comment and share your personal experience with LexD networking with the rest of the world. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.